We invite you on a very special journey, a journey which truly moves me. I'm walking with a grandmother, a grandmother who has no grandchildren. They've been shot to death. They destroyed her life, her land. She is the goddess, the queen, the most important woman in a group of survivors from the Akunsu ethnic group in the state of Rondonia. We've traveled here. We've come thousands of kilometers to the heart of Rondonia, a Brazilian state which used to be filled with trees and today is filled with soybeans and cattle. This woman knows the secrets of the jungle and is going to accompany us throughout the program. She is part of this ethnic group and she is charged with keeping the fire always lit. Her grandchildren will not be able to see a better world. The Akwensu are in danger, the end of the world on a television program. The Akonsu homeland is leaking away like water into a boat about to sink. These Indians are caught in the sights of the white man, for whom everything seems to be not enough here in Rondonia. Every day, the newspaper headlines in this heart-rending area of Brazil read as if they had been written several centuries ago. The papers are printed with human blood, and on their front pages we find events which we thought had been eradicated forever, reported as if they were completely normal. In Porto Velho, Rondonia's capital, we find the headquarters of a courageous newspaper which has for years borne witness to the massacre. The Indian has historically been considered a fierce creature, an animal, and a hindrance to development, which in Rondonia is actually the disorganized occupation of territory, which has been going on here for many years now, and which in reality prevents the development claimed by those in power. Because in reality, this is a model designed exclusively for the production of soybeans and livestock, which benefits only the great landholders. Since 1956, the state of Rondonia has owed its name to this man, Marshal Rondon, wholehearted defender and champion of the Indians in the past, in supposedly more inhumane times. Today, his respectful message is diluted in the pool of ambitions and avarice of those who rule this Amazon territory. These human beings seem not to exist, to count, for those who govern Rondonia. 
The Akunsu tribe is made up of just six survivors, and it is around them that this film is centered. This hyper-realistic portrait seeks to return to these people their dignity, which is as fragile as bohemian crystal. Ururu, the grandmother of the group, carries on in spite of everything, seeking her treasure. The sacred dye of the seeds of the Uruku plant. Although condemned to extinction, the Akunsu surrender to beauty, to their customs, to their ancestral power. They dye their hair the color of blood with this jungle cosmetic, just as their ancestors did here for centuries, long before the arrival of their murderers. All of these groups of humans are subjected to economic pressure and this pressure takes the form of ranches, the large soybean plantations which are beginning to arrive, and the removal of the wood, which is always the first step. The start of all the destruction is exploiting the wood, and later the access to the large ranches and other aspects in which the state takes part such as the construction of roads and hydroelectric projects. All of this is a part of a process which we call development and which involves these people. So here in this place, we have almost all of the threats I have mentioned. We have the wood, the ranches, and these Indians are threatened. And now the soybeans are coming in. This is therefore a process which poses a threat to them in every way. Rondonia's 240,000 square kilometers represent 3% of Brazil's territory, an area equal to approximately half that of Spain. But it appears that this territory's million and a half inhabitants do not wish to share it with the natives. The jungle is losing ground, and with it, its direct descendants, the people of the jungle. Those who thousands of years ago inherited this green treasure, which today they roam as captives. Rarely do the Akunsu cross the frontier, It's almost impossible to see them out in the open, exposed, outside their beloved jungle. But today, our camera has captured one of these dangerous forays. At the very gates of their house, where until just one year ago, the trees were as tall as cathedrals, today, there graze thousands of cattle. The Akunsu defend themselves with words and arrows from a mammoth process bearing down upon them to squash them like ants. These images are just a symbol, an exclusive document. A handful of people outraged at the very gates of hell.
These two families have less and less territory. Two adult males and four women live beneath the same roof and the same threat. Where they feel most safe and at home is in the lap of their mother, the jungle. They cannot or should not leave this leafy refuge. 26,000 hectares surrounded by an 81 kilometer perimeter if they want to stay alive. <laughs> 